Hi, good morning everybody. Um, welcome to Delilah's Downloads, January 16, 2017. Um, so happy to be back with you guys. I know we've been off, I've been off for a couple weeks, um, but was immediately awakened this morning with a word to share. Um, so I, I'm so glad that you guys have decided to join and click play because I believe this is something that is especially for you. Um, so today, um, coming up the Word, just so that you um, have a little time to get your Bibles all prepared, um, we're going to be coming from Romans 2, verses 16, I'm sorry, verses 6 through 11, specifically verse 11, but want to give a little context before we roll right into verse 11. Um, but Romans 2, 6 through 11. And as always, we'll just get started with the word of prayer, um, asking that um the Holy Spirit just come into this place, um, both physically and virtually, um, and just anoint us with the Spirit and create an environment where God's Word can not only just be heard, but it can be consumed in our heart and replicated in our life. We want, Lord, we ask that you come in and deposit a Word that can show up and manifest itself in our life. Father, that it is a game-changing Word, that is a Word that changes our lives and our behavior, Father. Holy Spirit, that we ask that you just stay in this space. Um, creating a right heart, a right ear, and a right mind that we are able to just just adhere to the word, thirst for the word, seek more of the word, um, and share the word with one another. And we just bless every home, every person that is represented here. Um, and we ask that it's just uh, um, everything that the locust has eaten, Father, that is restored amongst these families, Father, these holy families, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, so just jumping right in, Romans 2, verses 6 through 11. So just going to read um, a bit, and then we'll do some reflection. So reading from 6, it says that God will repay each person according to what they have done. Um, and just a little more context, um, here in Romans, there's so much in Romans. <laughs> there's just so much in Romans. Romans is Paul, one of the epistles um, where Paul writes to the the church of Romans and his really foundational work on, you know, who Christ is, what it's like to what it's like to be a Christian. Um, if you haven't kind of read through Romans, Romans is a great place to read through as far as um, what our Christian walk uh, is and should be, and, and who Christ is to us. The Bible does it in general, but Roman the Roman does a bang up job for uh, with it. And here they're talking about Paul is specifically talking about um, judging judging um so really kind of quickly as the plane goes over i thought i was going to be up early enough to avoid this i'm sorry um it talks about how god will judge um it talks about how god will judge not how we will judge but how god will judge uh so just going back into it so god will repay each person according to what they have done um, to those who by persistence in doing good seek glory, honor, and immorality, he will be giving, given eternal life. For those who are self-seeking, who reject the truth and follow evil, there will be wrath and anger. Um, there will be trouble and distress for every human being who does evil, first the Jew, then the Gentile. But glory, honor, and peace for everyone who does good, first the Jew, then the Gentile. For God does not show favoritism. For God does not show favoritism. So that's really what I want to talk about. But we'll talk about um, the other verses a little bit first as well. So it says God will repay. It says that in verse 6 that God will repay each person according to what they've done. It doesn't say you or I will repay persons for according to what they've done. The word says that God will repay them. So when we have that thing, that retaliation, whatever that is in our heart that comes up when we're wronged, um, that wants to get back at people, that wants to be passive aggressive with people, that wants to do whatever revenge type thing that we believe should be done, we need to quickly check ourselves, go to the word and read again that God will repay. God will repay both wrongdoings and right doings. Um, so we want to check our heart when we're dealing with our brother and sister because not only um, it does it say that God will repay, but we want forgiveness as well. So we want to be quick to give what we want to receive, right? For those, you know, if we sow, if we sow sparingly, we reap sparingly. So you want to sow not just financially, but into others what you want to see in life. So practice forgiveness. Um, he goes on to say in 7 that those who by persistence, Paul says those who by persistence in doing good work 
um, um, doing good, seek glory, honor, and morality. He doesn't say those who are perfect, right? He says that those by persistence, so that we're we're chasing after a relationship with God. We are um, we are adhering to you know seek ye first the kingdom of God and all of His righteousness. We are persistent in our pursuit with God. Um, so that's to say, don't allow the condemnation to come in when we fall short because we'll all fall fall short. That's why, thankfully, His mercies are renewed every day. Um, so don't allow the condemnation to come in and stop your works with God. Because as long as we're persistent, then there's some some rewards that comes to us. Um, it also says that if but if we choose to be self-seeking and reject the truth and follow evil, there'll be wrath and anger. Now, it's not saying God's going to come down with brimstones, hell and brimstones, and just damn us to hell. But if we choose to step out of God's will and follow a line that's not according to God's will, then we can't expect all the peace and blessings that God has promised. There will be anger. There will be wrath. Um, but these are things that we have put down on ourselves in the world because we are out of line with God's will. So we want to make sure that when we see ourselves falling, we're getting back in line um, ASAP. <laughs> That's an ASAP deal. Um, going on to verse uh, 9, there will be trouble and distress for every human being who does evil, first the Jew and Gentile. So similarly, if we fall out of line with God, it's not him specifically punishing us. It's us not fully living in the promise of his will and the blessings of his will. And it talks about Jews and Gentiles because it talks about pre-Christ and post-Christ, that all beings are covered by the word of God. Um, so that just really wants to call out, especially, sorry, especially early on here where Paul's talking to historic churches um, that have been under, you know, the Jewish realm, if you will, right? The law, if you will. So he wants to know that we're talking to everybody. We're talking to, the word talks to everybody. Um, so skipping down to 11, for God does not show favoritism. And we hear this in another way um, in the King James Version that God is not a respecter of persons. So it's basically saying, and this is really what I wanted to talk about seven minutes in, so give me a few more minutes, um, that God is not a respecter of people. God does not show favoritism. So everything that the word speaks about is talking to you. Don't think that you read these stories. We shouldn't think that we read these stories and, oh, that apply, apply to Ezekiel. Oh, that apply to Abraham. Oh, that apply to Paul. Oh, that apply to Daniel, but it doesn't apply to me. Oh, that apply to Esther. That apply to Ruth, but it doesn't apply to me. God's word, the rhema word, applies to all of us. Applies to all of us. The blessings, the actions, um, whatever it is, that's, um, the convictions, whatever it is that it's calling, it's calling us to do specifically. So I had to take a couple notes here just to remind us that, you know, don't set ourselves apart from God's word, from this particular word. Um, it applies to every single person. Um, it applies to every single person. So when the when the word says if we reap so, uh, sparingly, we sow sparingly, that is you and I. Um, when the word um, just going to Matthew 28, because um, this has been really a uh, ministry ministry happening in my church about discipleship. When the word says to therefore go and create disciples, he wasn't just talking about his 12. Jesus and, and Matthew wasn't just talking about his 12. He was talking to us. Right. That we're not supposed to just be saved for the sake of being saved and sitting in a church and waving our hands and having a good day on Sunday and um, chasing after our own soul. We are to therefore go. So that's found in Matthew 28, 19, if you're interested. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit and teaching them. So we're to go forth and teach. We're not just to consume. We're not just to get poured into. We're also to pour out. So when God, when Jesus talks about that in Matthew, he's talking about us, right? And teach them to obey everything. There's typically an action with the blessing with God. If you obey, you do this, right? If you tithe, this happens, right? Supernatural provisions happen. So there's action for us to do in the word. And it's not good enough. It's not good enough, family, that we understand what needs to happen and that we do it. We have to teach others to understand what needs to happen so that they can do it. We have to hold hands and, and teach and pour into people to create disciples. Um, when it uh, There was another thing that I wanted to share with you guys. When it talks about Daniel. So with the Daniel fast going on right now, I've been studying Daniel as well. Pray for me. I'm almost there. 20 seconds the last day. Um, 
when when Daniel 117, when it says to these four men, um, that was Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego, and Daniel, um, God gave knowledge, understanding of all kinds of literature and learning, and Daniel could understand visions and dreams of all kinds. You can understand visions and dreams of all kinds. God can give us all understanding of learnings and literature. We but need to ask. That's just not applicable to Daniel and, and his and his guys. That's applicable to us. So we need to understand when we approach the Bible that this is a living word for us. This is not just stories about people of once ago. These are um these are these are examples of how God can show up in our life. These are lessons and teachings on how God can show up in our life. So don't cheat yourself, fam. Don't go through the Bible and just read it and, oh, that's a good story. And I understand the context of the story. Also understand that those lessons, blessings, actions, um, consequences, all of that applies to you. And then once you understand it, make sure that the next person understand it, understands it. Because that is our job, to go out to save souls and create disciples. So that's really what I had to share with you guys today, um, specifically Romans 2, uh, 11, that God does not show favoritism. Um, King James Version, God is not a respecter of people, persons. Everything in the word applies to you. So I invite you as always to sit with your word, um, hear what God has to say to you, hear what the spirit has to say to you, um, digest, let that thing manifest in you and go out and save the world. I'm sorry, if you're looking at anything short of that, you're not looking big enough. Go out and save the world. Um, so that is what I had to share today, Delilah's Downloads. Uh, it was Romans 2, 6 through 11. Romans is full of, full, full of great stuff, so um, go check it out. Um, but with that, as always, I want to give an opportunity for anyone who may be listening that is not currently um, under the guidance of the Trinity of, the, of God, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit, and ask you um, if you want to accept Christ as your Savior, uh, just to repeat after me. Father God, thank you for this opportunity to come before you. Jesus, I thank you for dying for my sins and rise, rising on the third day. I ask that you forgive me of all my sins and come into my life and lead me from this day forward. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Well, guys, <clears throat> that's it. Delilah's Downloads, January 16, 2017. Um, happy Martin Luther King Day. I'd be remiss if I didn't say so. Another great man of God. Um, so um, with that, I bid you guys a farewell. Um, save many souls, and including your own. <laughs> Have a good one.